evening, everybody. My name is George Vanahan, and I am the executive director of the West Virginia Campaign for a Healthy Future, and I'll be your moderator this evening for what we hope is a very important discussion on the status of federal health care reform. We have a very distinguished group of guests who represent a wide range of opinions on the issue. We hope to learn from them where they can agree, as well as those parts of health care reform that they do not. I'll introduce them to you in a few moments. But first, I want to explain our format for this evening's forum. After I introduce our guests, I will allow each of them to provide some opening comments, uh, probably about two to three minutes each. When the opening comments are over, we'll go over your questions, which will be um, written down on cards. You all received cards when you came in this uh, evening. Where's Angela and Paul? They would raise their hands. There's Angela, there's Paul. They will collect the cards. Uh, they will bring them to me, and I will go through those, those questions as well. Uh, so we want to answer your questions, and we want to get to all the questions. Uh, following that, we're going to provide you with an opportunity to speak. Uh, there are microphones on either side. So when we get to that portion, what I would encourage you to do is line up uh, behind the microphone um, so that uh, you can have an opportunity to speak this evening. We do encourage you to try to keep your, your comments as brief as possible. And the only way, only reason I say that is so that we have and give everybody an opportunity uh, to have something to say. And then we'll finish up with some closing comments uh, from our distinguished guests. A little background before we begin. Currently, there are three health reform bills being considered by Congress. They are labeled the House Bill the Senate Health Bill, and the Senate Finance Bill, which passed out of committee today by a 14 to 9 vote. I think that all the panelists will probably agree, and I probably shouldn't say this because I should let them agree, that probably some type of health care reform is necessary. From all accounts, there are three major areas of discussion within each health reform bill, and I'm sure we'll get into a lively discussion this evening on all three. I call them three C's. Cost. How much will the bill cost to implement? Coverage. Who and what percentage of the population will be covered by the legislation? And thirdly, content. What is in the bill and how will that affect you and me? I'm sure our panelists will focus on those three areas this evening. Let's begin. To my right, in the red jacket, is Gailey Miller. Gaylene is AARP's new state director. She has worked in the field of aging programs and services for over 20 years and is a tireless advocate on behalf of older West Virginians. She has served as commissioner of the West Virginia Bureau of Senior Services. To my left is Perry Bryant. Perry is the executive director of West Virginians for Affordable Health Care. He formed this organization in 2005 to address the rising costs of health care. He is a former VISTA worker, lobbyist for the Citizens Action Group, and West Virginia Education Association. To my far right is Louise Reese. Louise is the Chief Executive Officer of the West Virginia Primary Care Association. She works closely with state and national health care leaders to support and advocate for the 33 community health centers in West Virginia. Louise serves on the Board of Directors for the West Virginia Health Information Network the West Virginia Behavioral Health Advisory Board, and is president of the board of directors of the West Virginia chapter of the American College of Healthcare Executives. Fred Early to my right is president of Bound State Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Based in Parkersburg, Early joined the company in 1989. He has overall responsibility for sales and marketing communications, <coughs> government relations, public relations, corporate planning, legal and regulatory compliance, provider reimbursement, and provider relations. He also serves as a member of the board of directors for Mountain State Blue Cross and Blue Shield. He is on the board of directors of the West Virginia High Risk Pool and the West Virginia Health Information Network. James Patterson. Reverend Patterson is a senior pastor of the Institute Church of Nazarene, where he has served for the last 20 years. He is also co-founder and president of the Partnership of African American Churches, a nonprofit organization headquartered here in Charleston, which has affiliated congregation in several counties throughout the state. 
PAAC has been in existence for 10 years and focuses on policy and programmatic implementation, primarily in the areas of health and education. Larry Thee is Secretary Treasurer of the West Virginia AFL-CIO. He represents 550 affiliate local unions in West Virginia. And finally, Steve Roberts is president of the West Virginia Chamber of Commerce, a statewide organization that seeks greater prosperity and higher standard of living for West Virginians. The Chamber is a voice of business throughout the state and is West Virginia's largest association of employers whose members employ more than half of our state's workers. Steve is a West Virginia native and a graduate of West Virginia Wesleyan College. Let's give him a nice round of applause. statements. Um, I just want to remind you that we do have uh, question cards out there, so please uh, write your questions down and, uh, and look for uh, Angela and Paul who will collect those. Well, let's start all the way to my left. And Larry, I think you're first, so um, we're going to give each panelist about three minutes to, uh, to state their case on health care reform and then get into your questions. Thank you, George. Uh, I am Larry Matheny, I'm here representing the FLCO, and I do have some prepared remarks that will hopefully help those in the audience that have taken time to their lives to be here tonight uh, to understand why I am here. <clears throat> Organized labor, uh, progressives, liberal positions, and various elected officials, and other citizen organizations have long supported change in health care that would reform the current system into some sort, some form of universal or national health coverage for all United States citizens. Despite tremendous efforts from various groups and people, the United States remains and is the only industrialized nation in the world that does not provide universal health for all its citizens. In fact, 47 million people in the United States have no form of health insurance coverage, and in the United States, 57% of people under the age 21 will go without health care coverage at some point during the span of 10 years, including over one-third of these citizens lacking medical coverage for a year or longer. The United States Treasury Department recently released that that shows that 48% of all citizens will go without health care coverage at some point in any 10-year period of their life. In addition, the current health care system in the United States is broken and needs to be repaired due to the soaring costs and grade. In the last 10 years, family health insurance premiums have risen 138%, which is an average of over $1,000 per month. In America, working class families and average citizens simply can't afford to pay health care premiums that cost this much. Even though the United States is the richest and most powerful country in the world, a recent Harvard University study showed that 45,000 people die in the United States each year because they do not have health insurance or access to health care. Mahatma Gandhi once said, honest disagreement is often a good sign of progress. And notably speaking, it's quite possible that some type of compromise or agreement may be reached by supporters and opponents of the issue by engaging in fair, respectful, and honest debate. In my humble opinion, screaming, yelling, shouting, lying, or using angry words are mean-spirited and that's not useful in solving this current crisis regarding health care in America. <coughs> Democrats are saying that Republicans want people to hurry up and die. It's not true. Republicans say President Obama is a socialist and universal health care equates to socialism. That's not true either. Perhaps any politician from either party who feels Congress is turned to moving too quickly on health care crisis, that issue is certainly timely because from 1912 to 2009 is 97 years, and that's how long we've been having this debate. How long will it take for Congress to write a bill and vote either yes or no on 